I've got a really nice problem for you guys today that's from our favorite problem suggester. And this involves a recursive sequence as well as a finite sum. But before we jump into it, I urge you guys to subscribe if you haven't done that yet. We have a goal in the channel of getting to pi 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you wanna help me reach that goal, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. So let's see what we've got. So let's define a recursive sequence by x sub n plus 1 equals x sub n minus 1 divided by x sub n plus 1 for all n bigger than or equal to 0. Also, we want to suppose that the sum of the 2020th first terms equals 0. In other words, the sum as k goes from 1 to 2020 of x sub k is 0. And then using those two pieces of information, our goal is to determine what x naught must be, so what x zero must be. Okay, so let's get to it. The first thing that we'll do is maybe see if we can play around with this, this recursion to make some sort of deeper not, uh, linear recursion out of this nonlinear recursion. So in other words, we've got this one-step recursion, which is nonlinear, where we've got this divisibility here. Could we maybe make a two-step or a three-step or a four-step recursion that is, instead of being nonlinear, linear, and thus easier to deal with? Okay, so let's maybe go ahead and start by looking at x sub n plus 2. So that's very clearly equal to x sub n plus 1 minus 1 over x sub n plus 1 plus 1. Okay, nice. But now from here what we'll do is take this expression for x sub n plus 1 and compose it inside of our quotient here. So this will give us x sub n minus 1 over x sub n plus 1 minus 1 over x sub n minus 1 over x sub n plus 1 plus 1. Okay, so just to reiterate what happened here, we took this x sub n plus 1 here and replaced it with this. And we took this x sub n plus 1 in the denominator and we'll, we replaced it with the same thing. Again, using our defining recursion. Now from here, what we'd like to do is simplify this complex fraction. So notice we've got a fraction that includes fractions in the numerator and the denominator. So we can simplify that by multiplying by x sub n plus one over x sub n plus one. So let's see what that leaves us with. So hitting this yellow bracketed term will cancel out that denominator, leaving us with x sub n minus 1, and then we'll have minus x sub n plus 1. And that's from this minus 1 multiplying onto that x sub n plus 1. Okay, and then what's happening in the denominator? Well, we'll have x sub n minus 1 plus x sub n plus 1, kind of for the same reason. Now let's see what kind of stuff we'll cancel. Well, here we'll have x sub n minus x sub n, and then we'll have negative one minus one. So that leaves us with a negative two in the numerator. The next we'll have negative one plus one, those will cancel, and we'll have x sub n plus x sub n, that gives us two x sub n. In the end, we have minus one over x sub n. So now we've got this recursion, this two-step recursion, x sub n plus two is the same thing as minus one over x sub n, which is like a little bit easier to work with, but not quite a linear recursion yet. But let's notice that if x sub n plus two is this, and if we were to compose something like this with itself, we would get the identity. That motivates us to look at x sub n plus four. So let's do that. So now x sub n plus four, that'll be one over, sorry, I should say minus one over x sub n plus two using that blue underlined recursion. But then we'll use that blue underlined recursion again, giving us minus one over minus one over x sub n that cancels out to x sub n. So let's see, we've got now x sub n plus four is equal to x sub n. But now that's true for all 
n, which is a natural number. I should say n, a non-negative integer, so n bigger than or equal to zero. That means we only have three types of terms we need to work with. We need to work with things that look like x1, which is the same thing as x5, which is the same thing as x9, so on and so forth. We achieve those just by this x1 term. We also have things like x2, which is the same thing as x6, by applying this green underlined recursion, which is the same thing as x10, and so on and so forth. We have x3, which is the same thing as x7, which is the same thing as x11, so on and so forth, applying that green underlined recursion. And finally, we have x0, which is the same thing as x4, which is the same thing as x8, so on and so forth. And that covers all values of our sequence. Okay, so now that we've got kind of this information under our belts, let's see if we can attack this question. So this is where we left ourselves off. We found out that x sub n plus two was minus one over x sub n, and we found that x sub n plus four was x sub n. But then composing this two-step recursion with this one-step recursion, we can easily get that x sub n plus three is, well, it's negative one over x sub n plus one, which is negative x sub n minus one over x sub n minus one. Again, take the reciprocal of this and negate it. And now we're actually ready to finish this thing off. So let's note that zero is equal to the sum as n goes from one up to 2020 of x sub k. That's a given. And now let's break this sum into four pieces. So this is gonna be the sum as k goes from one up to 550 of each of the like four types of terms that we got that we saw on the last board over there. So we're gonna have things that are like one more than a multiple of four, things that are two more than a multiple of four, three more than a multiple of four, or four more, or a multiple of four. So we'll have x sub 4k minus three plus x sub 4k minus two plus x sub 4 k minus one plus x sub four k. So that might seem like a little bit cumbersome, but based on the indexing we have, that's actually the best way to do it. So let's note that this x sub four k minus three term, since k starts with one, that starts with x sub one, and then the next one will be x sub five, the next one will be x sub nine, and so on and so forth. Whereas this x sub 4k minus two term will include x sub two, x sub six, x sub 10, so on and so forth. And then maybe just for one more example, this x sub 4k minus one will be x sub three, x sub seven, so on and so forth. So rewriting it like this, we capture all of these terms kind of individually. All right. But using our rule from, again, the last board, we know that all of these terms in this list are the same thing as x sub one. So that means we can replace this guy right here with x sub one. Everything in this list is x sub two. We can replace this with x sub two. Everything in this list is x sub three. And everything in this list is x sub four, which is the same thing as x sub zero. So that means we're adding 550 copies of that sum together, which gives us 550 times x0 plus x1 plus x2 plus x3. Great. But we don't know what x0 is, that's kind of our goal, but we can apply the recursions that we have on the board to write x1, 2, 3 in terms of x0. So that gives us 550 x0 plus, so x1 will be x0 minus one over x0 plus one. x sub two is minus one over x0 from this rule. x3 will be minus x sub n plus one over x sub n minus one. Being careful about factoring that minus sign out. And then finally, x sub four is back to, and that's all of the terms. We have one, two, three, four terms. Okay, but if 550 times this sum is equal to zero, then that means this sum is equal to zero. 
So that leaves us this equation to solve, which shouldn't be too bad, and we'll do that now. And now let's work towards solving this equation. So we'll do this by combining the first two terms and the last two terms, and then moving things to the opposite side of the uh, equation. So I can combine the first two terms by giving myself a common denominator. My common denominator will be this x naught plus one. So I need to multiply by x naught plus one over x naught plus one for this guy right here. And then the common denominator for the last two terms will be this product of denominators. So I need to multiply this one by x naught minus one over x naught minus one, and this one by x naught over x naught. Okay, so let's see what that leaves me with. So I'll be left with x naught squared plus x naught, and then plus x naught minus one over x naught plus one. So I put some stuff together there, but I think that's okay. And then I'll have minus, and I'll group these together. So I'll have x naught minus one, and then plus x naught squared plus x naught. And this is gonna be all over x naught times x naught minus one, and I have this is equal to zero. So again, that's from putting that together, taking this minus sign out. And now let's simplify. So I can take this and rewrite it as x naught squared plus 2x naught minus 1. I can take this, write it as x naught squared plus another 2x naught minus 1. So I think that's pretty interesting. Then moving things around, I see that I have x naught squared plus 2x naught minus 1 over x naught plus 1 equals x naught squared plus 2x naught minus 1 over x naught times x naught minus 1. But this is actually a pretty interesting situation because we have the same numerator here. Notice this equation will be satisfied if the numerator equals 0. Not even thinking about the denominator because if the numerator is 0, then we have 0 equals 0. So that gives us one possible solution, which occurs when x naught squared plus 2x naught minus 1 equals 0, which we can solve using the quadratic equation. So that gives us x naught equals, so like negative b, that'll be negative 2, plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, so that'll be plus minus 8, all over 2. Then simplifying that, we'll see that x naught is equal to negative 1 plus minus the square root of 2. And that's our first possible pairs of solutions for x naught, and I think both of those work. Then where should we go from here? Well, if this numerator is not equal to zero, then that means we can divide both sides by the numerator. So I'll just put here otherwise. In other words, if that thing over there does not occur, we can divide both sides by the numerator, leaving us with one over x naught plus one equals one over x naught times x naught minus one. Then cross multiplying, that gives us x naught squared minus x naught equals x naught plus one. So I multiplied through a little bit there, but I think that's okay. But now, moving things around here, we'll get x naught squared equals minus 2x naught minus 1 equals 0. So that's like a companion equation to that thing over there. But we can again solve that using the quadratic formula and we'll end up with essentially the same thing, but instead of a minus 1 here, we'll have a plus 1 here, giving us four total possibilities. Okay, so in the end, we have these four solutions to our value of x naught that makes these two things satisfied. Now, before I end this, I'd like to present you guys with a continuous version of this problem that you might do for homework. So here's a continuous version of this problem. So our one-step recursion will turn into a first-order differential equation, and our sum will turn into an integral. So we've got y prime is equal to y minus 1 over y plus 1, so that mirrors what's going on here, and the integral from 1 to 20, 20 of y dx equals 0, that mirrors what's going on here. And then our goal is to determine the initial value. So what's y evaluated at zero? So that mirrors this question over here. So maybe post in the comments if you come up with a solution of this continuous version. And that's a good place to stop.